Nationals the other day that you guys met up for lunch this yep. summer. Now, in addition to maybe just reaching out to players, what did you do after accepting the job to just prepare for the season, for this camp, and, and everything else? That they oh, as soon as I signed, I mean, Amir, Amir sent me all those uh, videos from the games and, uh, and power play stuff. Uh, that's basically what I'm responsible for. So. I went. Uh, I went through it, and I tried to prepare, uh, you know, some clips, presentation for the prospect camps and for our uh, camp uh, following the main camp here in Rochester. So that's basically what I done, and uh, watched the entire playoff uh, playoff runs for the Americans, and um, that was pretty much it. And basically talk hockey with the uh, apps uh, many times during the week. What, what did you know about Yuri, and what have you learned about him? That he doesn't look like a 19-year-old. I'll tell you that because of the size, you know. And uh, what I, uh, well, let's put it this way: even though I, I have not been coaching for the last two years, I follow hockey closely, like any kind of level. And uh, he's an up-and-coming player from uh, Czech Republic, so there is a lot of media coverage. Uh, and uh, he had a great season. He was one of the top dogs at uh, you know the summer. Uh, the uh, cancelled the U20 tournament, right? And, uh, so that was in the in the summer. He had a great tournament, great showing. So they were talking about him quite a bit. So the first thing that stands out, I guess, is his uh, skating ability and a shot. And uh, I remember coaching in Czech Republic. He skated against us, and uh, he was already playing men's hockey when he was a fairly young age. So there's got to be something special about him. And being drafted in the first round, you need to be special. I coached against him, against him, and uh, one of my former colleagues uh, from the Czech national team, the coaching staff, he was with the U20, so they had him on the, and uh, he very much liked him as a person and as a player, obviously, so I just, uh, when I find out that he trains in my hometown over the summer, I went over to the rink, introduced myself, and uh, I made a mistake. I walked into the locker room and there were a lot of players that I used to play with and they all started saying hello. So I invited him home for lunch and uh, because my family was gone. So we just sat down, we talked hockey and, you know, I just noticed the size of his neck when I was looking at him there. <laughs> and I was thinking like, geez, this is not a 19 year old kid. <laughs> Well, it's a total change of scenery, even though the, the times are different because you can call home, FaceTime or everything. You don't feel like you are lost, but uh, it's always good when uh, if you start to learn the language, first of all, so you can blend in with your teammates. And uh, obviously the best thing about it is that uh, you get right into the game. So you start playing, you start being part of the team and, uh, and uh, you start being successful. You help the team to win. So for them coming over at the young age, uh, it, it's either or. I mean, they can take an easy way out and stay home or stay in Czech for, or in Europe for a couple more years, try to learn the language or take a shot, take a chance and, and come in here right away because I think that's what the organizations want. They want to, you know, have the, have the development coaches, the coaches in Rochester or even here if he would make the top club work with him, you know, because it's a totally different hockey here in North America than it is in Europe, unfortunately. Yeah. Great season. So, how do you balance like the benefits for those kids to come right away from North America and at a young age versus going back? Or you just touch on it going back to Europe for a year. Well, because all the names you mentioned, they already played men's hockey, so it's not like they're coming from uh, Czech junior leagues, you know, so or European junior leagues. They already played men's game there and they were, uh, let's say they were the top dogs on the U20 tournaments or the U18 or whatever that, they already were being uh, leaders. And uh, as I mentioned the previous question, the, uh, the organizations are looking for them to be here so they can keep a close eye, they can have the skills coaches, the development coaches work with them right here and they get to play more games. So they are 
much better prepare what might be coming for them in the future. So in your mind, it's a bit of... It's very individual. It's very individual, but uh, here I believe that they get more of an opportunity to uh, get the minutes compared to some of the teams in Europe. They may not be looking for their best uh, best interest or best development moving forward because they're being drafted and the teams already know that, hey, maybe we're losing this guy, you know, soon. How unique was what Yuri was able to do last year as an 18 <laughs> you, you played in the AHL when you were young. Yeah. Good rookie year. To, to score whatever, 24 goals. Yeah. Well, because the shot he's got, it's a gift. I already talked about the skating uh, skating ability. And the other thing is he played men's hockey since I believe he was 16 years old in Carlo Vivari. So uh, for him, his, uh, his case individually wasn't uh, much of a change. The biggest change probably was the lifestyle, the environment, and uh, obviously the number of the games that he was, uh, he was playing. Because uh, going from 52 in Czech, to uh, 70, whatever that is in a, in a minors, right? It's a it's a huge difference in the season, but uh, you you can clearly see in the progression in the season that he had that the second part of the season, once he got more comfortable and he got to know the players better, he he blended in a little bit more. He he took off. So with his shot, it's um, you know it, it actually everything played in his uh, in his favor. Talk a lot about how important this camp is for players. How important is this camp for you right now to start building relationships with some guys you're going to be with all season? Well, it's a, it, it's the same thing. I'm basically a new guy coming coming in. It's actually one of the organizations that I did not play for, you know. <laughs> so it's like uh, it's uh, you know it's it's very over overwhelming, you know, to meet everyone, and I'm really bad with the names. So it's uh, I'm very happy that when I can go on the ice and be there just with the just with the players, but uh, yes, I mean you need to start to build a relationship, especially with the five or six players we have here that already played in Rochester and I watched them play in their playoff run. So it's uh, but it's great. It's like I'm very happy that I'm back into like a pro hockey, if you can say, and um, you know very thankful for uh, getting the opportunity here. What did you decide? Well, quite frankly, I uh, once I finished coaching in Czech after my third year there, which was a disaster, COVID and uh, win loss ratio, it was awful. But uh, I finished the season on the on the bar stool on the bench because I um, halfway through the year I had to go for a knee surgery, and uh, I needed time to get in the first of all in better mi- mental mindset. And second of all, in a better physical shape to be able to go on the ice with the guys and be able to skate and stuff like that. So uh, I didn't think it's going to take me two years to kind of get back, but it was it was needed. I I feel refreshed. I feel in, um, you know, in a good physical shape. But uh, also it's, um, you know, I missed hockey and even last year I wasn't doing anything I, I traveled I went to uh, you know a couple other places to uh, observe watch and use my contacts from my playing days with uh, some of my previous coaches and you know how I ended up in Rochester um, I mean quick story I went to uh, Ferris State one of my former junior players from Tampa plays for Ferris State and Abs played in Ferris State coach Bob Daniels mentioned my name that I was out there in the middle of a winter in Big Rapids so I guess <laughs> maybe he liked it that I actually left Tampa in the middle of a winter to go to Big Rapids, <laughs> you know. So it's a, uh, and uh, honestly, I actually thought if I want to establish myself as a coach here in North America, I may have to start in the East Coast because uh, I might be very open-minded and tell some people to, uh, you know, very honestly into their eye what I think about them. But I don't have the balls to send out my resume, you know. I didn't have the balls. Let's be honest. So that's uh, that's basically how I got here, and uh, I actually thought I'll start somewhere in the East Coast, if I be lucky, you know, because it's not easy. There's a lot of good good coaches out there that don't have a job or don't get the opportunity. 
obviously hockey can kind of be a middle ground between different cultures overseas or stateside, but between your time coaching in the Czech and then returning back here, are you noticing any differences in just the coaching style that you're Huge changes. I mean, the, the hockey is getting faster and faster. It's uh, NHL. It's a it's a young man league, especially with this organization. What what you see is the the because of uh, some of the lack of the success that the Sabers had the last few years. There's a tremendous amount of talent with uh, with the young players coming in and trying to become uh, Sabers. So it's. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be very interesting, but uh, the game is constantly changing, right? Like a lot of teams are playing in different styles, so that was uh, intriguing to me when I when I was watching because uh, I love my family, but as soon as the 7 p.m. rolls in, I love to watch the games. Well, I. Uh, well, obviously, you don't want to bother him too much because he's got a lot on his plate right now with the Canadians. But uh, I got to see him, uh, I believe it was uh, March in Tampa because uh, we had the Hall of Fame weekend for the Lightning alumni. And he was in that, uh, you know, inaugural Hall of Fame being uh, uh, selected for that. So he was out there. So we chatted. It was, uh, it was, he's still the same. He just doesn't have to pretend with us, with the old teammates, right? So it's uh, it's it's great for him that he's actually a coach at that uh, franchise, and good for the players because they have someone to to look up to because he was one of the hardest working players that I ever played with, you know.